Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Dr. Jenkins. I'm library director. I'm also on the committee for Women's History Month events. You see other members of the committee around here. This program will last about an hour. See my background music there. The net wedding is going to give us some background music so that you can appreciate the artwork in an enlightening environment with a nice atmosphere. So the way this will proceed is uh, she'll play for a few minutes and then our poetry readers will begin. I'll introduce each one. They will finish and um, we'll transition through there. She'll play a little bit throughout. But um, I just wanted to make sure everybody felt welcome here at the library at our Women's History Month event, Wednesday, March 20th. So enjoy the refreshments, listen to the music, take a look at the, the artwork that we have on display. Tell your friends that it's, we'll be here the rest of the month. And so right now, just enjoy the atmosphere. Thank you. Jim, do you have She was ready.
And just a, as a sort of side note, all the composers that you will be listening to today are women composers. Okay. Um, for our first reader will be Christopher Henderson with Sarah Helen Whitman's The Raven. Thank you. Sarah Helen Whitman, The Raven. Raven from the dim dominions on the night's plutonian shore. Oft I hear thy dusky pinions wave and flutter around my door. See thy shadow of thy pinions float along the moonlit floor. Often the oak was blooming round some dim ancestral tower. In the lurid distance looming some high solitary tower. I can hear thy storm cry booming through the lonely midnight hour. When the moon is at its, is at its uh, zenith, though uh, thou dost hast, <laughs> sorry, thou dost haunt the moated hall, where the marish flower greeneth, or the waters like a pall, where the house of usher leaneth, darkly nodding, to its fall. There, there I see thee dimly gliding, see thy black plumes waving slow, in its hollow casements hiding, when thy shadow yawns below, to the sullen tarn confiding the dark secrets of their woe. See thee when the stars are burning, in their cressets silver clear, when Legia's spirits yearning for the earth-like wanders near. When Morella's soul returning, weirdly whispers, I am here. Once within a realm enchanted on a far isle of the seas, by an earthly vision haunted, by an earthly melodies, where the evening sunlight slanted golden through the, go golden through the garden trees. Where the dreamy moonlight dozes, where the early violets dwell. Listening to the silver closes of a lyric loved too well. Suddenly, among the roses, like a cloud, thy shadow fell. Once where Olamine lies sleeping, hard by Arbor's haunted mare. Where the ghouls of, vig of vigil keeping. On that night of all the year came thy sounding pinion sweeping through the leafless woods of Mere. Oft with Presperine I wonder on the night's Plutonian shore, hoping, fearing, while I ponder on thy loved and lost Lenore, on the demon's doubts that sunder soul from soul, from soul forevermore. Trusting, trusting though with sorrow laden, that's when life's dark dream is o'er. By whatever, never, by whatever name the maiden lives with thy mystic lore, Eros in that Adam shall his Charmin meet once more. Thank you all for letting me read for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. What we're going to hear now is one of the few selections that Ella Fitzgerald actually wrote. It's a tisket a tasket. So uh, we're going to hear she that. Wrote. She wrote that. And we'll hear that. And then we'll hear more poetry.
going to do Carol King, You've Got a Friend. Carol King, You've Got a Friend, and then we'll have another reading. Now we're going to hear from a group of students. Um, I'm going to, four of them are going to do Maya Angelou's Phenomenal Woman. Kimberly Ruiz, Melda Alvarez, Brianna Marujo, Andrea Gonzalez. And they'll come up here. So if you can say who you are, or were you in the group? Say who you are before you start. Why don't you come to the microphone, then we can get it all recorded. it's not. My name is Kimberly Reese, and this is, um, I'm Brianna Murho. I'm Andrea Gonzalez. And I'm Imelda Alvarez. Woman, wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man, the fellows stand 
or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honey bees. I say, it's a fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth, the swing of my waist and the joy in my feet. I am a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much that they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the right of my breasts, the grace of my style. I am a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. Thank you. Yes. We're going to have two more musical selections. The Rose, and this is from Amanda McBroom, and then finally, next, it's a waltz by Amy Marcy Beach.
begin with that. We're going to hear a couple more, but the first one will be, oh, actually for me. All right. I forgot I was on the program there for a second. <laughs> I'm Dr. Jenkins, and I will be doing a poem by Jean Marie Beaumont. It's called When I'm in My Kitchen. When I am in the kitchen, I think about the past. I empty the ice cube trays, crack, crack, cracking like bones. And I think of decades of ice cubes, and of John Cheever, of Ann Sexton making cocktails, of decades of cocktail parties. And it feels suddenly far too lonely at my counter. Although I have on hooks nearby the embroidered apron of my friend's grandmother, and one my mother made for me for Christmas 30 years ago, with a gingham I had coveted through my childhood. In my kitchen, I wield my great odd sturdy black-handled soup ladle and spatula. And when I pull out the drawer, like one in a morgue, I visit the silverware of my husband's grandparents. We never met, but I place this in my mouth every day and keep it polished out of duty. In the cabinets, I find my godmother's teapot, my mother's Cambridge glass goblets, my mother-in-law's Franciscan plates, and here's a cutting board my first husband parqueted, and two pot holders I wove in grade school. Oh, the past is too much with me in the kitchen, where I open the vintage metal recipe box, robin's egg blue in its interior, to uncover the card for waffles, written in my father's hand, reaching out from the grave to guide me from the beginning, sift and mix dry ingredients, with his note that this makes three waffles in our large pan. And around that hour, an unbearable round stain of egg yolk or melted butter that wants to find a world. So that was, um, oh, cool. Jean Marie. Cool. <clears throat> have just a couple more selections, again from women composers, and our last reader. And then we're going to close this out. So let me go see what the next ones will be.
That last one was by the Hill Sisters. Um, you recognize it? It's Happy Birthday. We have a woman to thank for that song. First one is from Dolly Parton. Uh, our last reader today will be Donna Sennett with um, her poem. I don't have the title of it, but I'll it'll be you. phenomenal. <laughs> okay. And then she's going to close our program for us. Okay, Donna. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know what I was going to read until the last moment, so. Um, my poem is by Charlotte Bronte, and she wrote it back sometime around 1837, the tail end of that year, the beginning of 1838, and she wrote it based on a uh, picture that she had seen somewhere and it was a landscape of a woman this picture and the the woman was in the foreground in a bustled dress with a veil down her back and over her arm and um, she was looking into the picture where there was an island on each side and there were mountains and trees and and this, this woman was just standing there watching these mountains. And so um, Charlotte wrote this poem as she gazed at this photo, or this picture. What does she dream of lingering all alone? What does she dream of lingering all alone on the vast terrace or the stream impending? Through all the dim, still night, no lifelike tone with soft rush of wind and wave is blending. Her fairy step upon the marble falls with startling echo through those silent halls. Chill is the night, though glorious, and she folds her robe upon her breast to meet the blast coming down from the barren northern wolves. There. How she shuddered as the breeze blew past and died on yonder track of foam with shiver of giant reed and flag fringing the river. Full, brilliant shines the moon, lifted on high o'er noble land and nobler river flowing. Through parting hills that swell upon the sky still with the hue of dying daylight glowing. Well, with the plumy winds and dewy glades open to the moonlight in the deepest shades. Turn, lady, to thy halls, for singing shrill against the gusts descends. Again, the river frets into foam. I see thy dark eyes fill with large and bitter tears. Thy sweet lips quiver. Thank you.
Ah, it's back in my era. Old lady era. Yeah. Very, but that's when they had good music. Um, so thank you guys all for coming today, and thank you to all of our student readers today. I'll butcher your names because I'm from Florida, so. But it's Christopher Henderson, Kimberly Ruiz, Imelda Alvarez, Andrea Gonzalez, Brianna Morrow, okay, Brianna, Brianna. And to our library director, Sharon Jenkins, our pianist, yay, Lynette Wedig, to our local artists for their displays. Be sure to check them out if you haven't seen them. They're all by local artists, some of which are connected to this campus, so you may recognize a name or two. And thank you for joining us today to listen to the poetry by women, to view the art by women, and to hear the music composed by women. We appreciate your interest in the arts, and we look forward to the future generations and having their music played, their art seen, and their poetry read. And perhaps one day that could be you. So thank you so much for coming and continue to enjoy the day. <laughs>